Firstly, thank you, Melody, for your lovely introduction. But unlike Shrek, our tryouts get us too bogged down. So how do we turn our talks into presentation dynamite? I'm not talking about being a PowerPoint whiz. I'm on about the right script to blow our audience's minds. Always remember that a poor presentation can put you in a very difficult situation. Only the other day, for example, I was put in a really awkward position. I mean, I'm just not as flexible at yoga as I used to be. Remember, the introduction sets the scene, the delivery sets the tone, and the content sets the mood. Previously, we've learned about the importance of being epic in our delivery from the fabulous Felody. How to present is critical, and even the best talks can easily be ruined by poor presentation, right? But imagine you're great at presenting, but what you're presenting is drier than the Sahara. Creating a presentation that moves your audience will completely change how you are remembered. Have you ever realised the most successful presenters, whether actors, musicians, speakers, authors, or even comedians, all share one important skill. The ability to take their audience on an emotional journey, and the wilder the ride, the better. So don't let it appear to be your first rodeo. So let's take a few moments for a little experiment. Think of one thing that really annoys you about your partner or an ex-partner. Every memory we feel worth saving is stored in our brains along with an emotional hashtag, like a cute little emoji attached to it for easy retrieval. Yep. We retrieve our memories by emotion, not content. Once you got going, did you struggle to think of just one? That's because all those memories are sharing the same emoji and are stored together in that same mental folder. Recall one memory and all the rest with the same emotional hashtag come flooding in. Talk about emotional overload. Think about what that really means for how we make decisions. Take action, are motivated, or even are traumatized. Imagine a lot of unresolved loose ends with the same strong, painful emotion, like perhaps fear or guilt, that come flooding out of that filing cabinet. It's enough to trigger PTSD meaning that to change the association, we have to change the emotional label on these memories to perhaps one of acceptance. Then it can be stored and retrieved very differently. For me, I like to use humour, even if I'm the only one that finds it funny. After all, a talk is supposed to be fun to do and not something that scares you half to death. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you got scared half to death twice? Every joke we tell has the power to shift the emotions of our audience with the power to split a room. Not everyone wants to arrive at the same destination that we have in mind. Humour takes people on a journey to somewhere they weren't expecting and we all have boundaries based on our moral compass, our experience and what we are taught to be offended by. If a child says something adult, it can make us laugh because we're not expecting it and the novelty is perhaps amusing. If an adult says it, our reaction may well be very different and we may even be offended. Context is king and emotion is our queen and the true power behind the throne. 
So how do we create a dynamic presentation? Here's a couple of simple tricks in the time it takes to cook noodles that will change the way you present forever. Are you ready? Are you giving your presentation to crush people with your knowledge or to entertain them with your inclusion? I learned more from watching David Attenborough wildlife documentaries than from many of my classes at university. And it was a great uni. Entertainment sinks in better and deeper with almost no objection to being stored in our grey mush, which is why adverts work so well. Who doesn't prefer theatre to a classroom? In the words of the late Dr. Stephen Covey, begin with the end in mind. Where do you want to leave your audience when the talk finishes? In a happy place, in a somber place, in a shocked place, or drive them to taking action? Make it clear what the emotion is that you want your audience to reach. And what is the big point that is going to do that? Never, and I mean never, start a talk without having planned this first. That is the difference between a standing ovation worthy talk that raises the roof and a rambling one where everyone hits the floor. Don't try to create too many points. People generally have the attention span of half a lemon. So try to stick to a bunch of little points that gradually build up to support and lead to that one big one. I've literally watched thousands, I exaggerate not, thousands of TED Talks, and it takes them 18 minutes to make one single point. So don't try to cram in dozens of big ones in a 10 minute talk. Climb one mountain at a time. Add an emoji or emotional hashtag to your slide notes to show what emotion you want your audience to feel when you're on that slide or part of your talk. This is super important. Take the audience on a journey from one emotion to the other as you move them towards that final destination. Creatively spoon feed your audience with the rich imagery through words and media that you use. The more brain calories your audience has to consume to keep up, the more of them get left behind. If you want them to remember it, make it easy for them to repeat it to others and to themselves. Then it becomes their story to use. I gave a talk which included a story about a canoeist trapped in a swamp surrounded by man-eating crocodiles. Technically, man and woman eating crocodiles, they didn't discriminate. But one attendee loved that story so much. They've since told me that they find themselves using it almost every day. A story that hits home keeps the dream alive, doesn't it? A well-told story, a captivating tale, and a talk that really lifts the audience is a powerful thing to be proud of. Never tell me that the sky is the limit when there's footprints on the moon. Trigger memories through motion. Add music, images, videos even. Even if only by suggestion, your audience should feel what you feel. So whatever you do, enjoy the ride. And always end with something strong. That last words will often set the hashtag that our audiences use to store the memory of you. Would you rather hear a great story with a weak ending or an average story with a powerful close? Make your emotions build 
not flop. And always go out with a bang. While you're in your breakout rooms, why not discuss what you remember from this talk and why? How can you use this for your message, your pitch, website, marketing and so on? And as a bonus, did you figure out these icons? Chances are you didn't get them, so you ignored them. Why consume brain calories to understand them after all? Make your talks magnetic. To attract your audience is perhaps the most obvious one. Although, as a hint, to make sure you've prepared all the right ingredients and have the right recipes for success, the other icon was actually to avoid Teflon talks. Avoid those talks where a smooth presentation may flow well, but you need things that stick. There's no worse conversation killer, and that applies to social media posts too, than pure agreement. It just becomes noise with no reason to reflect upon. So give your audience something to stick their thoughts to, and it will simmer in their minds for some time to come.